Alrighty everyone, welcome back here to the Megan Moose channel. We are currently at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex and we are about to hop on one of the bus tours to go out on the Space Center. So we have a slot for 11 a.m. here. You have to get a reservation to go on the bus tour. So we have one for 11 a.m. Looks like they are gonna start boarding. So we're gonna go ahead and get on in line. So here we go. We're just walking to get in line to get a bus. So it's about 10.40 now, so they board a little bit earlier before the scheduled time for the bus to go out. So we're going to go ahead and get on the bus. And we are going to go visit the Apollo and Saturn V Center, which I'm very excited to go and see, but also drive around and show you guys a little bit of the Space Center. So I'm excited to do that. It's fun because in the lines, all of the pillars are different rockets. So here is Blue Origin's rocket. Not sure if that's New Glenn. And then over here we have ULA. And then we have SpaceX on down there, the Falcon 9 rocket. So pretty cool and it looks like our bus just pulled up here. So we're gonna go ahead and get on. So these buses are definitely new and updated since I have last been here. So I really like the outsides of them. here is even like an airplane you get your own little AC vent you get a light pretty nice operation is well underway for the first SLS mission the, the, the crawler will be building. doing what it was like originally designed to do once garage, again which is but it's really neat rockets. I've had the opportunity to go inside of the VAB here and also on top of the roof so that was definitely a really neat experience very amazing view up there all right so this is the building with the world's tallest stores. They are 456 feet tall and they take 45 minutes to open. is a mobile launch platform from the shuttle era. So I want you to look at the tracks on the crawler. There are eight set of tracks. Each track has 57 cleats. Each cleat weighs one ton. Now imagine the crawler going underneath the mobile launch platform with the rocket on top, lifting everything up and then going down the crawler way to the launch pad. Okay, we get to the top of the bridge. I want you to look to right in the water. Maybe if we're lucky, we'll see an alligator, a manatee, or NBW. Nothing but water. Yeah, I also was able to go inside of one of the crawlers before, so that also was another neat experience I've been able to have. No critters. Oh, there was a gator down there. Just missed it. Yeah, you never know what you'll see out here. Also, wild pigs. They'll run back and forth. We're inside the, the road. At level you always need to watch them whenever you're driving because that's not something up. you want to hit on your way to right work. The right. the SpaceX is launching from NASA Lease Launch Pad 39A to SpaceX for 20 years. Turn a little further up on your right. Those three lightning towers. That is Launch Pad 39B. That's where NASA is getting ready for their new space launch system rocket. A rocket that will be going to the moon and Mars. Alrighty, here we go. Headed into our first exhibit here at the Apollo and Saturn V Center. Welcome to the Apollo Saturn V Center. Our presentation will begin in a few short moments. and hearing disabilities, please be seated in the front row. This is the final 
launch control for the Apollo missions. This is not a mock-up. These are the very consoles we sat at when men first took off to fly to the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 had put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big leap, and we were doing it with a rocket that no man had ever flown before. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8, right here where it actually happened. So that was the firing room, and here is the backside of the Saturn V rocket. So this is the backside here of the Saturn V rocket, and honestly, it is massive. You can see some people walking down here, but it is absolutely incredible just seeing the sheer size of this rocket, and also just how it fits in this building. It is almost the entire length of the building here but it is absolutely amazing. We'll keep walking around it. So it's neat because they actually have the Rocky here split into its separate stages. They have stage 
three here's stage two and then stage one up here the nose is at the end of the building which we're gonna see so i was mistaken the end here is actually stage three so we have the nose of the rocket up here but very amazing to see it up close and personal for sure also, it's nice if you ever come to visit the Saturn V Center, they do have a cafeteria here where you can grab some lunch, grab a quick snack, and then continue on your day here at the Space Center. Here's a fun mock-up of the moon landing. Got two astronauts there. Look at their little footprints, super cool. And they have their lander in the back there. And fun fact about this lander, you can see the note here that it's actually an authentic lunar module, it says but it was replaced with a new modified lunar module when NASA decided that Apollo 15 and subsequent missions would carry the lunar rover. So it's actually pretty neat. And we've got the quote here, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Here we've got the Astro van that actually takes the fully suited up astronauts to the launch pad for launch. And it looks like you can either go into or look into the van here. So let's go ahead and see. There you go, there's the inside. I think that drive from the building where they get all suited up finally to the launch pad, I think that has to be the most stressful drive you could probably take you probably have your nerves going and everything, but pretty cool to see this. Here's another view that gives you an idea just how long the Saturn V rocket is here. We're finally at the end. There's the actual nose. I keep saying nose, but there it is. Wow, it's just amazing. Pretty cool to see in person. They also have an Apollo 1 tribute center here that we will hop into real quick and see. Here we are, we're gonna walk across the crew access arm here to get to the Apollo 1 capsule. All right, we're gonna ask him a question here. I'm gonna say, what was surprising about leaving the moon? Uh, one of the most dramatic parts of the flight was uh, liftoff from the lunar surface. You're sitting, you're standing there looking out, looking at the computer count countdown, and when it got five, four, three, two, one, bang, the engine ignited. Well, the first thing that happens though, if the, the ascent stage is about six inches above the descent stage, and it's held there by a number of big bolts well they those are explosive bolts and when you to separate from the descent stage they, those explosive charges fire off and the first thing you get a hint that it's dropping instead of going that way and you just about to form this thought hey something wrong when bang the engine lights and off you go and that was the ride of a lifetime Here's a fun look at the Apollo spacesuits here. Check these out, there's the helmet. But look at these moon boots. Those are quite the boots. Now we're gonna head into what I believe is called the treasures gallery here. Here's the actual Apollo 14 capsule that was rescued after splashdown. And it's actually nicknamed Kitty Hawk, I didn't know that. 
Here's a pretty neat look at an actual lunar sample here, taken from the Apollo 17 mission. And if you were ever wondering how they get samples from the moon back here to Earth, here's a look at some moon rock containment vessels, it says. So they must put them in here to preserve them for their flight home. This is pretty neat. Here's Alan Shepard's suit, and it says 1971, so this suit is 50 years old this year, which is pretty neat. So there's Alan Shepard's suit. Pretty cool, and then we look over here, and there's a bunch of different types of spacesuits here. Personally, that metal one, or the tin one here, definitely is giving me Iron Man vibes. Definitely reminds me of Iron Man, but kind of neat to see all of the different evolutions or different types of suits here. This one's from 1969. And this one, it says it's from 1967. Our Iron Man one here is from 1963. And the last one here is 1964. I didn't take part of it today, but they actually have guided tours that happen every so often. So if that's something that you're interested in when coming to the Saturn V Center, you can get a little bit of a guided tour to get more of an inside scoop. But we haven't gotten the chance to look at this command and service module yet. It was fun. At work the one time I was able to go into an actual uh, module that they have being preserved. can't remember the name of it, but here's a look into the inside of one. And we're back underneath one of the rocket boosters here of the Saturn V rocket. I wish that you could get just a scale or an idea of how big this rocket actually is. It's pretty neat to be right underneath one and just see the size of it. But it's definitely very neat. Definitely check out the Saturn V Center if you come to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Center. They also have a store that you can check out, get some little souvenirs of your time here. Also have Snoopy the astronaut here. But you can check that out if you want some souvenirs of your time at the Space Center. But thank you guys so much again for watching. I am going to hop on one of the buses to head back to the Visitor Center Complex to finish out my day here at the Kennedy Space Center. So I will attach the vlog above so that way you can watch the rest of my day. But thanks so much again for watching guys. If you want to keep up with future adventures, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in another video. See you guys.